Welcome to Ace Eagles Comics and Movies. Today, we're gonna to go over how to hang your raw books to the wall and how to hang your graded books to the wall at a low cost. You know, I had a dilemma. I wanted to put my pictures on the wall. You know, I wanted to have my pictures. <laughs> I wanted to have my comic books on the wall. Um, and, you know, I chose a gallery view, which is, you know, the staggered look. But how did I want, how did I get it to the wall? And I saw different options where you use picture frames, you know, uh, people, they have special other kind of frames that you can put on the wall. Uh, and for graded books, you can buy these little brackets that you can put on there. And I find the brackets are expensive. The brackets are almost the price of actually grading the book. That's what I felt. And I'm like, I didn't want to put that much money into it. Uh, so how do I put these books onto the wall where uh, it, it's low cost, um, it's flexible, um, and I like this clean where you don't see anything but the book. You know, I want to see the book. I don't want to see the bracket holding the book. I don't want to see the frame. You know, um, that's what I was looking at when I was building this wall. So I have two options. The first option was the first option I ever went with, um, and I'll explain that how to do that in this video. Uh, and the second option was for graded books. Now, the second option can be used for graded books and it can be used for raw, and I'm slowly converting these from the first option to the second option, but either one of them is fine. Uh, and I'll explain in the videos what the differences are. So uh, let's go and let's uh, see what these two options are. So option one, for um, displaying books on walls without putting in frames, uh, you know, without getting uh, paying for expensive brackets or anything. I have two very relatively cheap options. Uh, they're both good. Um, I started to like one over the other. Now, now I'll explain option one first, and then, which is what I've been doing for at least a couple years. And then option two, I'll explain. And uh, the option two is the one that can be used for slabs. So, First thing you need is two backing boards, okay? A bag, uh, if you want for display, uh, a Mylar bag will probably will display nicer, but a regular uh, bag will will suffice. Um, you need your comic book, and you need a thumbtack, okay? So, and then, um, so what you do here is you're gonna take one of the boards, and you're gonna put a thumbtack through it, preferably in the center, which I'll put right there, like that, okay? And then I'll put a second board. So the second board's really there to protect the book so the thumbtack doesn't touch the book itself, All right? Then I'm gonna put the book on, on the board and place it inside of the bag. So put it in the bag, then what you're gonna do is it's gonna go, it's gonna be underneath the plastic, so you just poke a hole through the plastic or through the mylar, and then you bring it down, and you poke with a hole, and then you can tape it down from there. So now this can easily be placed onto a wall using that. Yes, it does put a hole into the wall, very very small hole, uh, but it works beautifully. The book lies flat against the wall, and you can put the position and change the position on the wall without too, causing too much of an issue. I mean, it really is a small hole, smaller than the normal nail, even smaller than the uh, picture nails, the thumbtack. So it's it's not too bad at all, uh, damage in the wall. But if you're worried about damage, um, if you wanna stay away from that, you have option two. Now let's go with option two. So let's say you don't wanna put any holes in the wall. You wanna keep your, your walls safe. Um, there are command strips. There's regular command strips uh, which are normally not Velcro. Um, they go on, you can actually put those command strips on the back of the book and stick it onto the wall. Um, I like to use the Velcro one. It's a little overkill in terms of weight. This thing holds uh, up to 16 pounds. It's not necessary for, uh, for a raw book, but it allows me to put it on the wall. And if I want to take it off the wall and change the position on the wall, the Velcro is nice for that. So what I do, and since these take up to 16 pounds, we don't need all a, a full strip to hold things. Um, but what I want to do is normally you would have two of these and they would connect together and you would hook up a picture on the wall. 
I, I used one command strip. And what I do is I didn't cut it in half. So I cut it in half, I grab a scissor, and I go right down the middle. And now I have the two halves. And since I have the two halves, I can just put them right on top of each other. Now I want to, I tend to put it opposite. So if I want to pull the tab off of the book bag or I want to pull the tag off to the wall, I can just pull this little uh, on each side. Um, so I line them up like that. I put the Velcro on. So now these book, you know, this is gonna be solid. So one side's gonna go on the wall and the other side's gonna go on the back of the book. Here is a bag and boarded book. Take it, I flip it over to the other side. Now in the option one, I had the thumbtack here. I don't have it there anymore. Um, I take one side of this, peel it off and place it. I like, to, I like to put it right below the opening so I can reuse the bag if I wanted to. Um, put it there. And also by putting it below, if I want to change out the book without even taking the, the book, the bag off the wall, I could just slide the book out, slide a new bag uh, book in. Uh, this would also work great with a top loader. If you got a top loader, you put the Velcro on the back of the top loader, then you really are can just slide books in and out very easily and uh, just keep those top loaders in different positions on your wall. So this is on here. I'm gonna show you shortly how to take this and then put it on the wall. So now I have this. The same thing can be done with a slab, okay? With a slab, it's a little heavier, but it's not 16 pounds. So I usually turn it upside down. You wanna take a strip, and again, this can hold 16 pounds. So you can cut that strip in half to save some money. Um, so you cut the strip in half and you clump them together just like you did with this, with the raw book. And you put it right here, right? Not, you don't wanna put it at the top here because it actually will show when you're looking at it from the front. So you wanna put it behind the book, so right around here. And you wanna put a second one here. You do not wanna put the Velcro here. This well is too deep. If I put it in there, even with two, it won't be deep, uh, high enough to actually stick to the wall. I wish it would because I think it looks a little nicer. You can't, there's a little, sometimes a chance if I misalign it, not to, to sh it for it to be visible, um, but it can't be put here. So, and that also kind of covers this if you want to take it off the wall, etc. cetera. So um, I put it here and then I put another one over here and then to save money, I cut it in half so it looks more like that. And I put one of those up here and one of those up there. So instead of using four strips, I'm using only two strips by doing that. That's more enough to hold. Now you may ask, if these can hold 16 pounds each, why not just use one? Well, I'll show you that when I go downstairs and show you the wall. But this, when you put it on the top, it tends to be a little wobbly at the bottom. And with my slabs, I kind of just, even though I know it's 16 pounds, I want that little extra protection. Plus it's a little more firm on the wall. It doesn't move at all. So I, I like the fact that I put it the top and the bottom. And you will see downstairs that I actually have a few books uh, that I don't have on the bottom and you can see the difference. Okay, so now I'm back downstairs in my gallery wall here. And I got the empty spot over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this picture on the wall and I always try to line it up with the barcode right there. So I always try to line up, you see all my books, they're all lined up the top of the book is lined up with the top of the barcode section. Um, and I do that for all of them. Right here, the giant size is lined up with the venom here, etc. Uh, so that's kind of the way I did it. You can do it at the bottom of the book like this if you want to. Uh, you could do it more centered in the book. It's up to you. What's nice about this with the walls is you can do a variety of things. You don't. You can just do a straight line or you can do a variety of different things to get what you want. Um, in my case, I do it by the barcode. What I'm gonna do here is take off this strip at the back of the, of the book, right? Then I'm gonna take the book. I'm gonna put it in that spot. So you will see, I'm lining it up, lining it up with the bark, with the little barcode area there. Um, and I'm trying to center it, I'm eyeballing it We're based on the book above. And, the, and then the actual barcode, and then I'm gonna put it firmly on to the wall like this. 
Make sure it's on there, light press, not too bad. And now it's displayed on my wall. See that? So if you notice, it tends to float a little bit off the wall. See that? Um, when you put the roll coaster strips, when you use the command strips, it, it has it float and that's actually a little added effect. It's almost just like the slabs, just keeps it just a little bit off the wall. While like this one right here is using a thumbtack from option one, and you see it's completely flat against the wall. So the other thing is, and remember I talked about putting a strip at the top and putting a strip at the bottom. So this one is pretty solid on the wall. It's not moving. This one over here is also pretty solid. It's not moving. While this one over here, I only put the command strip at the top, right? And you will see, you can actually see the command strip back there. I didn't put the command strip low enough. I should have put it a little bit further down so it's not visible at all. So that's a little tiny mistake. And the other mistake was not putting the command strip at the bottom. So now this book is actually wobbly at the bottom. I mean, it's this thing can hold six, you know, 16 pounds, so it's pretty strong. But I would like to add an extra one so it just feels a little extra solid there. Um, same thing with this one. See that? So... Now this one doesn't have that problem. It's not moving, right? So is this one not moving. So that's a little suggestion is put a command strip at the bottom and at the top. So this is the current wall. As I get new books and get things in, I'll keep adding as I get bored with certain ones to be up there, I'll remove them. But I kind of really like this look uh, I may even expand it. You know, maybe I'll expand it to the wall I have over here, which I have three cutouts. I don't have the real books. <laughs> uh, books I would love to get, uh, in particular that one right in the middle. But, you know, I can use that wall, I can expand and make this a really elaborate. I can even go down here and fill in the gaps along the way. All right. Thank you very much. Um, please like, please subscribe, first of all. Please subscribe. Please like this video, leave a comment, ask questions, do whatever you want. Um, I'm going to try to put a link to the command strips if you get there and any materials that I use. The command strips are the main one. Um, and uh, come back. Thank you very much.